Hey guys, it's Mike from the Geek Pub, and on this episode, we're gonna set up Retro Pie on a Raspberry Pi. Okay, so this is probably the most requested video in the history of the Geek Pub, and that is, You've shown us how to build the arcade cabinet, but now show us how to build the internals, build the hardware and the software that runs it. And today, that's what we're going to do. Now, there's two ways that you can go about this. The first way is you can use a PC with Windows or Linux on it. The second way is you can use a Raspberry Pi. So the Raspberry Pi is a $35 PC. Literally anybody can afford one of these. Um, the second reason for using the Raspberry Pi is a piece of software called RetroPie. RetroPie is a pre-built um, arcade platform for emulating all kinds of different old systems. Anything from a Commodore 64 to an Atari to a Nintendo Entertainment System to arcade games. And it comes with all of the stuff pre-configured. You don't have to hardly do anything. So it makes a fantastic platform. Um, so let's start out by opening it up. And this kit came with a um, HDMI cable, some heat sinks that you don't really need, but they're not bad to have, a Raspberry Pi 3, a Raspberry Pi clear colored case, and then a Raspberry Pi USB power adapter. And so and then there's some instructions on how to do wiring and things like that that are not relevant to building an arcade. And so we'll put those away. So let me unbox all of this and then um, I'll give you a tour. Okay, now that I've got everything unboxed, let's go ahead and take a little tour. So I think the HDMI cable and the power supply are sort of self-explanatory, um, as are the heat sinks. You don't really need those, but if you're gonna overclock the Pi, it's not a bad thing to have. The next thing is the case. So the case I got is a clear case. You can get these in all kinds of different colors, um, but I really like the clear one because you can see all the componentry inside it, and these come apart really easy. Um, so then the last thing is the Raspberry Pi 3 itself. So the Raspberry Pi 3, um, it's got on the front of it four USB 2.0 ports. Unfortunately, they're not USB 3, um, which makes connecting a hard drive um, kind of bad because you don't get a lot of throughput. We do have Ethernet, wired Ethernet on board. There's an HDMI port and along with a headphone port for connecting speakers or headphones. And then these two connectors here, this is for a camera and um, connected directly to this along with a LCD touchscreen that connects to this port. Um, there's a lot of really cool applications that you can use for that. Um, on the bottom is the SD card slot and this is where we will install this SD card that came with the kit. Um, after we re-image it. The Raspberry Pi does not have a hard drive. It boots entirely and operates entirely from the SD card. Um, so that's kind of unique for computers. Um, the last thing that I want to point out here is this long row of pens, this header. This header is what's known as GPIO, or General Purpose Input Output. And so with this particular pen, or, or sorry, set of pens, um, you can control all kinds of things. And so you can, um, you can have input buttons go to this. Um, you could have outputs that turn on LEDs, power LEDs or other um, components that can switch relays um, and all kinds of things. So um, if you can imagine you're building an arcade that has um, like a shaker in it or um, lights that need to flash when somebody dies or a certain point uh, limit is reached, um, it would be incredibly easy to wire these up and have the Raspberry Pi control all of those devices. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is head over to the sdcard.org website and grab a copy of the SD card formatter. This particular set of software is specifically designed to optimize the format of SD cards, so we don't want to use Windows or Mac OS to format it. And then you'll just take the SD card and pop it into the adapter that came with your Raspberry Pi and then plug that into your computer. When you open the SD card formatter program, it's going to ask you for administrator privileges to your computer. Go ahead and give it that, and then just name the card. I just use RetroPy, and then click Format. It should only take just a couple of seconds. The next thing we'll do is we'll head over to the RetroPy website and grab a copy of RetroPy. 
Um, just grab the latest image. I believe as of this video, it is uh, 3.7. Now there are several ways that you can um, install RetroPie onto the SD card. Um, my favorite software is Apple Pie Baker, um, but there are several Windows versions as well. Um, you'll just need to grab one of those. So in this case, I'm gonna grab Apple Pie Baker and install it on my computer. Apple Pie Baker will also ask you for your administrator password. It needs that in order to have access to the SD card um, to format its file system. Then you just pick the image that we downloaded earlier from the RetroPie website, click OK, and then the software will install it on the card. The final step is just to install the card into the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so the next step is going to be to put the Raspberry Pi in its case, and then we're simply going to connect it to a mouse, keyboard, and monitor. So connecting the Raspberry Pi is super simple. All you have to do is plug in the HDMI, plug in your speakers into the audio out, and then in my particular case, I just have this dongle for wireless keyboard and mouse. I'll plug that into a USB port and then plug in the power. Okay, so once you boot RetroPie up, it's gonna to come to a screen that says, no gamepads detected, and ask you to configure one. So of course, you can certainly use the mouse and the keyboard to control your games, but that's not a lot of fun. So what a lot of people do is grab a Bluetooth, Sony, PlayStation, I believe these are called a DualShock 3. Um, you can grab one of these, you bond it to your Raspberry Pi Bluetooth, and um, then you control your games from there. Um, of course, in the arcade series, um, I use these aftermarket uh, Sanwa and um, X-Arcade game controllers, and we'll go into those in another video. What I wanna do for this video is use something that I really like, and this is a USB uh, Nintendo NES controller. So it looks and acts just like the original NES controller, but it plugs into the Raspberry Pi USB. So we'll go ahead and plug that into a USB port and start configuring it. So it's really simple to configure once you have it plugged in. You just press one of the buttons and hold it down. It'll recognize the device and then give you this configuration screen. And so all you have to do is it says D-pad up, you press D-pad up, D-pad down, D-pad down, and so on. And, um, and just make sure you press the right buttons for all of these. Now on this particular controller, I don't have X, Y, or analog controls. So what we'll do is we'll just hold the button down for each one of these, which just tells it to skip. And if you had these, such if you were using a DualShock or something like that, then um, of course, just go ahead and configure them. And there you go, now you are in RetroPie and you can control um, all of the screens um, with your controller. All right, so the easiest way to install games on the Raspberry Pi is to use a USB stick. So what you'll want to do is take the USB stick and erase it. Then on your computer, just create a directory called RetroPie. That's it, nothing else. Just create a directory called RetroPie. Take the USB stick and plug it into your Raspberry Pi. Once it's plugged into the Raspberry Pi, the RetroPie software is going to go through and create a directory structure with all of the locations of your config files along with all of your game ROMs. Now, what you'll need to do is once that completes, and it takes about a minute, is remove the stick from your Raspberry Pi and plug it back into your computer. So in this particular case, I'm going to do NES games. I'm going to drop Super Mario Brothers on there. So in that folder under RetroPie ROMs NES, just drop your ROM files for Super Mario Brothers. Then you just take the USB stick and plug it back into the Raspberry Pi. And after a couple of seconds, you can go press your start button, scroll down to quit, restart emulation station and say yes. This will refresh all of the games in the system and bring you back to a new menu that all of a sudden has additional games. So we can press uh, A to go to Nintendo, um, hit A again to load Super Mario Brothers, and now we have a complete emulated Nintendo NES system. And so 
We have a controller that looks just like a Nintendo Entertainment System. We have the game. We can press start. And play away. And that's all there is to it. Well, hey, thanks for watching this video. Stick around for the next one because we're gonna actually go into the details of wiring the Raspberry Pi into the arcade cabinet controls, and you don't wanna miss that one. If you're not following me on Facebook and Instagram, you should be because I post pictures almost every day of the projects that I'm working on. And also, if this video helped you, consider supporting me on Patreon. Well, that's all for this one. I'm gonna play some Super Mario Brothers.